Um, there's still a lot that I am unpacking from that conversation. And I'm sure for all of us, what an inspiring human being and person that, that Ahid is. And we're so grateful that we got to bring her into our pack space. Um, it is now time to be even more inspired and hear from more people on the ground in Palestine right now. Um, I, it is my pleasure to hand the mic off to Barry Mahmoud to start us off and to moderate our session. Hi. Go ahead, Barry. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, or good morning or wherever, wherever we're coming from. Welcome everyone to the second session of the second day of the conference. My name is Barry Mahmoud. I'm a student organizer and a longtime member of PAC. And I am very excited and am honored to be introducing our next session for the conference with students from Birzeit University's Right to Education campaign. So this session is going to provide us an overview of the experiences of students at Birzeit University and how Israel's military apartheid regime adds to, hinders, and influences their experience. The students will present their right to education campaign, specifically the overall goals of it, how it came together, and why it is needed. So joining us for our panel today, the students are Sundus Hamed, who is the coordinator of the right to education campaign in Birzeit University. She holds a master's degree in international relations. Rasmi Ajaj, a fourth year speech therapy and audiology student at Birzeit University and a volunteer in the Right to Education campaign. Mez Jarrar, a student activist in his fifth year in the faculty of business and economics at Birzeit University. Uh, Mez was actually previously detained for seven months in Israeli prisons and is currently a volunteer in the campaign. I'm to a Palestinian American conference and I'm, oh. Oh, mute, please. You can remind everyone to stay muted, please. Uh, and finally, we have Fairuz Salama, who is a master's student in Birzeit University's Saudi Studies program. She is a student activist and a volunteer in the campaign and a fellow in the new generation of social scientists in the Arab Region Fellowship Program. She holds a bachelor's degree in geography and a minor in political science from Birzeit University. Our panelists are going to present for about 30 minutes, and then when they are done, we will have about 20 to 30 minutes for a Q&A. So please feel free to type out your questions throughout the session, and we will get to them all at the end in the order that they are received. And now, without further ado, it's my pleasure to pass the mic off to Sundas to start us off. Hello, everyone. Is my voice heard? Yeah? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, first of all, okay, sorry, the camera is, hello, <laughs> okay, first of all, thank you for back, uh, for organi organizing this uh, conference and uh, for inviting us as, as the Right to Education campaign, uh, it's really important for us to be part of it, so thank you. Um, Okay, I'm gonna talk a, a bit about the right education campaign, why it's needed and still uh, um, uh, found, uh, still present in Birzeit University. And then I will pass uh, the mic for my colleagues to talk about their experiences as students living under apartheid. So the right education campaign was founded in 2002 as um, a product of a long history of activism at Birzeit University since the 70s and 80s. Uh, in response to the ongoing Israeli uh, violations towards uh, our right to education and academic freedom. Over the years, the campaign has expanded uh, its uh, focus to the access to education, which is obstructed by many physical bar barriers, including checkpoints uh, that isolate and cantonize Palestinian society and land. Moreover, students are subjected to arbitrary arrest and harassment on a daily basis, which means that their uh, um, journey to learn is basically uh, a daily struggle. Today, the Right to Education campaign uh, is functioning as a Palestinian grassroots campaign that is led by uh, university students who volunteer in it. 
Uh, it's uh, based on Buzek University and uh, with that pain, we try to uh, operate on different levels. And these are building an international campaign and network, uh, organizing and mobilizing for our right to education by connecting to pressure groups and students, uh, uh, solidar solidarity movements around the world. Also, we try to raise the voices of Palestinian students as, as they are the uh, main stakeholders of their own cause and they are the base of the campaign. So we are trying to empower them uh, by uh, uh, voluntary and community work, also by um, uh, giving them uh, trainings, uh, etc., for them to be empowered to mobilize for this cause. And one of the main reasons why the campaign was needed before and still functioning is that she, uh, the campaign provides legal uh, assistance and legal representation for students, uh, um, staff, and academic members who are imprisoned by the Israeli occupation. The campaign uh, provides uh, a free um, a lawyer who represents the, these um, um, uh, members and students in the Israeli jails. And we also do call to actions on their behalf. So uh, a brief about the right to education and its violations and what we do today. Uh, I'm going to give now a, a brief about it and then we, I uh, will pass for my uh, colleagues. So since the 1967, Israeli occupation has systematically targeted Palestinian uh, educational institutions as part of its objective to control and subjugate Palestinian society in order to sustain Israel's Jewish demographic supremacy and its unilaterally declared boundaries. The means of subjugation can be generally characterized sorry, into three accumulative phases. The outright criminalization of Palestinian education, the, the denial of free access to education, and the isolation of Palestinian educational institutions. So education under apartheid, let's say, uh, can mean many things. Sometimes it means uh, that uh, violations that, can you, that you can witness coming to Palestine or knowing about Palestine, reading in the news, such as the restriction of movement and um, uh, the arrest of students, etc. But also sometimes it can be uh, um, something invisible that has to do with the way the Israeli occupation demonstrates its control on our narrative as Palestinians and the way uh, we, can, we are trying to um, raise awareness about the Palestinian narrative and get solidarity with it around the world. I'm going to just give uh, key figures about Birzeit University and the violation, these violations that target uh, Birzeit University as we are located there and we document uh, some of these violations. Um, and then uh, pass to Majd uh, to, to talk about his experience. So Birzeit University was closed for 15 times since it was established in 1972 until today, it was closed for 15 times by military orders from Israeli occupation. The longest period of time was actually in the first uprising where the university was closed, totally closed and uh, education was considered illegal. Our, our university was closed at that time for 51 consecutive months. That is exactly 1,571 days. Students at that time, were threatened to be in the Israeli jails only for holding books. There was um, a military order that says if there was more than 10 students under one roof, they will be investigated with and sometimes jailed only for being uh, doing uh, study groups, etc. So our education at that time was criminalized, but still today criminalized in many ways, especially our student movements and our activists on campus. 
um, student councils in Palestinian universities and their active participation in the political life always been and still subjected to constant attacks and harassment from the Israeli occupation. Since 2004 until today, more than 2,000 students from Birzeit University alone was arrested. The Israeli military law criminalizes all forms of affiliation, sorry, with student councils. And these student blocks inside campus considered illegal. The ongoing arrest of student council members are a means to cripple Palestinian political resistance and a direct attack to their wide assembly. Also that uh, uh, has expanded to collective punishment for students. So um, since 2002, the second uprising until today, our campus has been raided for 18 times by the Israeli occupation. Last raid was last year in March, where um, they raided campus and they um, um, has arrested five students at the university. Also, unfortunately, today we have 31 of our students who are martyrs, who were killed by the Israeli occupation. Since 1984 until today, we have 31 of our students who are martyrs. Unfortunately, three of them has, uh, has uh, uh, been killed, have been killed, sorry, only in, in November last year. Two of them are brothers, Jawad and Zafar Rimawi. Actually yesterday, one of the uh, uh, former uh, students at Birzeit University uh, was also killed by the Israeli occupation. So it's basically um, a daily news for us to lose one of uh, our colleagues, um, either by arresting them or by killing them. The, the restriction, moreover, the restriction of movement has been um, affecting directly our education system. So today we face a reality where our education is localized rather than universal, especially in our higher education uh, institutions. Fairuz, my colleague, will talk more about the restriction of movement, but I will want to point two things. Birzeit University is becoming increasingly unable to fulfill its uh, uh, basic role as a national institution, simply because many students has no longer, uh, can no longer reach the university. For example, since, since 2000 until 2022, uh, the number of Gazan students enrolled at Birzeit University has decreased from 400 students in 2000. Today, we have only four students out of 15,000 students enrolled in Birzeit University. Imagine, only four. Uh, moreover, the, the procedure of entry and residency of foreigners in Judea and Samaria region as the Israeli occupation is, um, uh, has called it, which took effect in last October, grants the Israeli military immense power to isolate Palestinian higher education institutions from the rest of the world and it, to determine the future of Palestinian higher ed institutions. As, for example, as an occupying power, Israel is legally responsible for guaranteeing all human necessities and rights in the occupied Palestinian territories, including the right to education, and is in de facto control of all that goes and in and out of the territories, including foreign academics, researchers, uh, students, etc. For any international students to come to uh, Palestinian higher education um, institutions, they don't guarantee them a student visa. Instead, they give them a, a tourist visa for only three months. That's it. So even the international students are denied from their right to access, if, uh, to access their right to education. So um, given this overview, I want to say that 
the right to education is a fundamental human right and is basic to human freedom. The International Covenant of, uh, on Economic and Social Cultural Rights, ratified by Israel in, in 1991, underlines the, the fact that education is both a human right and in itself an indispensable means of realizing other human rights, like the right to be free. So with our, without our full right to education, we will, not we will never learn and be aware of our right to be free as Palestinians. Uh, I hope that I have more time because I, I, want, because I don't want to take uh, the time of others. Yeah? Um, okay. So, yeah, um, however, however you guys um, have set up the way, the order in which you speak. Um, I think like Majd, yeah, Majd and Rasmiya, then Fayrouz. I just, I have one point and I promise I'll finish. Yeah, totally, go ahead. <laughs> My presentation, yeah, okay. One last thing that I want to say that supporting the Palestinian uh, struggle allows us to reflect on the discrimi discrimination and forms of injustice that our own communities and societies have to tackle. From Palestine to the world, to all the solidarity movements around the world, especially in the US, it's really vital for us to reach out to you and to, be, uh, to know more about your struggle for you to know more about our struggle and to have this community uh, that tackles the injustice that happens in the world. Today, our Right to Education campaign needs your support. We call you to affiliate with our organization. Uh, you can support us by organizing uh, different events and um, so we support our urgent appeals and join us on our big event, which is the International Right to Education Week in November. And now I can pass to my colleague, Mr. Gerard. Thank you. Thank you, Zandos. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mr. Gerard. I am a fifth year student in uh, Birgit University, Faculty of Law and uh, business, business and Economics. And I want to talk to you to talk to you about the criminalization of uh, stu student activities activism. First, I would like to give an explanation to what Palestinian student activism looks like on the ground. Student movements and councils in Palestinian universities go all the way back to the 1970s and 1980s. Their significant impact in political levels and role mobilizing the students for national political action caused the occupation to impose obstacles and punishments upon uh, these students. These mobilized groups and uh, movements focus on supporting students in their academic lives uh, through, excuse me. Sorry for, I, I love to get. Is I was saying about supporting in their academic lives uh, through offering grants and most importantly providing a platform for intellectual and patriotic education targeting all the students, which is viewed from Israelis' perspective as an active act of terrorism, and they have reached in this conclusion to a place where anyone who participates in any of the movements, activities, especially and intentionally. The students' councils are counted as a terrorist by the Israeli law. I myself was an activist in Birzeit University in a student movement called the Islamic Bloc, and I was I was arrested for due this accusations of terrorism-based student activism. In March 2nd, 2021, an Israeli special force invaded my house at 4 a.m., got, de got detained and brutally arrested and moved to Al Maskubiya one of the most horrible investigation centers in Israel. The investigation process lasted for 42 days under, under solitary confi confinement, uh, including investigation sessions. Each one took 10 up to 20 hours straight on the same session. I cannot describe enough how harsh the conditions were during these 42 days. 
you cannot even imagine. I think you already know how the zero EDA investigation centers are like. The questions mainly were involved around the agenda behind my student activities inside the Birzet University campus. Uh, who do you work with? Who do you work for? Uh, how did you organize this uh, activity? And where, who finance you? Who manages you? Who work with? Who, who work under with under you from another students? After 42 days, I was transferred to another prison, offer prison, and I was subjected to over nine military trials. In the uh, and in the final trial, I was sentenced for seven months and 4,000 shekels, which is around $1,200. To be honest, breathing the indictment really, felt really silly for me, and I was charged and punished for doing few student-oriented initiatives, like such like assisting students' financial procedures, offering cold water bottles for students in hot days, and giving some, them some Snickers bars to, with a motivational quote uh, stitched to it. That's what, 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 what I was uh, gone for in jail for it. Uh, my story is one of another many similar stories of charged colleagues. One of my friends, Walid Hamad, was charged for participating in an empathy gathering, including prayers for victims of New Zealand mass shooting. Our colleague, Layan Kayed, she was charged for selling falafel in the campus. I bet in so many other countries, students are allowed to sell falafel, but in when it, when it comes to the Israeli political and martial bodies, these are considered as dangerous actions attempt to threaten the, its national security. As Sunda said, today we have more than 75 students from Birzeit University charged and sentenced in prison due to similar silly allegations. 18 of them are under administrative detention, which is, which is implanted without having a clear list of charges and defined reasons for uh, imprisonment. And this is just the tip of the mountain of the actual Palestinian uh, scene and how the student movement is crim being criminalized under the Israeli occupation. Uh, that's that's it. I was too fast, I think. And I am hoping to we could link bridges with, with such institutions like yours. And I'm very happy to be with you today to share my experience and the Palestinian students' experience in here in occupied Palestine. I'm happy to hear any question if you have. Thank you, Majd. Uh, yeah, uh, Rasmi, you can go ahead. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to continue talking about the criminalization of student activism, but um, I want to point out that it's not just on the level of university campus grounds. It's also, um, like Majd was talking about, it's also violating their digital rights. So we obviously know that in recent years, social media has become the go-to for political activity and mobilization. But um, Palestinian students don't have this opportunity to use it as their go to because they struggle to act upon their own digital rights. Um, so when I talk about their digital rights, I'm talking about their digital rights being violated in multiple aspects in their right to privacy being violated, their freedom of speech being violated, um, their freedom of participation and assembly online is being violated. And it's not just Palestinian students, it's also Palestinian networks. Um, and Palestinian networks actually face multiple takedowns, content takedowns, I'm sure we all know that. Um, and it restricts the Palestinian narrative as we as Palestinian students and Palestinians in general uh, rely on social media to spread our message and spread our message to the outside world. So when these kind of um, networks that we rely on as not only information for us and information for the outside world, when these are taken down, this restricts our narrative. And actually in the past week only from March 10th to 16, Hamla or the Arab Center for Advancement of Social Media reported that Facebook deleted the Palestinian network page Watan. And Watan is a network page that spreads Palestinian content, spreads current events that are happening in Palestine, um, to the outside world and actually has a very big following it has about 3.6 million followers so when you're talking about such a big network page that was taken down with 3.6 million followers that obviously leads to restriction of our narrative and blocking media content for Palestinians and for the outside world and it's not just um, big network pages that are taken down uh, student pages are taken down any student activist for example that posts about Palestine their account would be taken down 
their posts may be taken down. Um, they may face um, criminalization, like Majid was talking about, and they may even face long interrogation, jail time, just for posting something about Palestine. Um, Facebook, for example, restricts certain posts that have keywords, keywords like the word Shaheed, which means martyr in English. Um, and this is just an attempt to shut down student activists and shut down um, them spreading the word about what is going on in Palestine. Uh, Hamla actually reported that Meta, which is um, which services Facebook and Instagram, they actually admitted that Shahid or a martyr, when posts have these words, these um, these posts actually have greater content takedown than any other single word. So I just wanted to bring light to that. Um, and it's not just content take, uh, content takedown or um, account takedowns. It's also that Birzeit University students and Palestinian students in general actually receive threatening messages for their posts and for their participation uh, in student activism, like election day, for example. Um, and these threatening messages, especially in Birzeit, they actually increase during election period. Um, as we know, the right to vote and participate in student council elections should be a given right. It shouldn't be something that is argued about and something that we have to actually actively fight for every single day. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the case for us. It's not something that is given. It's not something that um, we can be secure in participating in. Um, they go out of their way to send us threatening messages from the Israeli occupation forces. Um, and I just wanted to actually read um, one of the messages that was sent lot in uh, this in last year's um election day and it was a, a few days before the election day in birzeit university by the israeli occupation forces and the message was actually sent to the parents of the students and it read tomorrow's birzeit university's election day for your knowledge your child's vote for the islamic bo uh, block will be considered illegal giving us the right to legally take action so unfortunately we're not allowed to um be politically active in the way we want to be politically active we are sent threats threatening messages um we can be interrogated for hours um we can be detained just for simply acting on our right to vote and our right um and our right to be politically active and i also want to talk about something else that restricts boston in narrative and it's actually the educational material that we have here in palestine so in both schools and universities in Palestine, the educational material is very restricted and it's actually restricted by the Israeli Association of Civil Rights. So any kind of material that we have in universities or schools has to be approved by them, by the Israeli Associ Association of Civil Rights, and they can deem certain material inappropriate. And when I mean inappropriate, I'm talking about um, them extending this to include the Palestinian historical narrative and Palestinian curricula. Um, so, um, in recent years, school books have actually been changed to exclude certain aspects of Palestinian narrative and certain lessons which um, have always been in our Palestinian books are actually being changed or removed. Um, sorry, are actually being changed and moved. And I want to talk about something that actually happened in September of last year, September 2022. There was actually a really big strike in uh, majority of the Palestinian schools in occupied Jerusalem, and this strike was over Israel-imposed books. Um, this was because Israel was actually trying to change the Palestinian content and change the historical narrative. Um, they were trying to add on their own content by removing ours. Um, and actually, Ziad al-Shamili, which is the head of the Parents Committee Union in Jerusalem, told Al Jazeera that there is an Israelization of Palestinian education going on. And he mentioned that this has existed for the past 10 to 12 years, but in the, re in, uh, the last three years, it actually has increased. And if they succeed, if Israel succeeds in changing the Palestinian curricula, it will have control over the education of 90% of our students in Jerusalem. So this is a really huge thing because we know globally, um, each country should be allowed to teach their history and teach what is true to them. But unfortunately for us, that's not the case. Our content is being removed from books, removed from the um, Palestinian curriculum. And it's not just in history books, it's also in Arabic, religion, history, and national references. Um, their own content is being added. Israelis um, own content is being added, such as um, the normalization of settlements, for example. So they add um, different stories in different books um, that talk about settlements to erasing our history and erasing what originally the, um, the content in those certain books. Um, so the points that I previously mentioned are just the tip of the iceberg for Palestinian students. On a daily basis, we fight for our right to education 
And a right that we obviously know should be a given right, should not be something um, that is as difficult as it is for us to obtain. Um, we fight to spread the Palestinian narrative despite all the obstacles thrown at us and despite the criminalization, both digital, uh, digitally and um, on campus grounds. We also fight, um, we also fight uh, the content takedown that's happening. We fight the educational material being um, being replaced. There are strikes um, across the country. And obviously all of this is an attempt to strip us of our fundamental human rights and our right to feel secure in learning our own narrative and spreading our own message. And uh, I just wanted to mention that it's obviously not easy for the Palestinian students to go to university fearing that at any moment there may be a military raid, even at daylight. And it's not easy for us to continue to post about Palestine, even though we know that it's not just content take, take down, it's also interrogation, it's also arrests, um, like Majid was talking about his own arrest. Um, so it's not that easy for us Palestinians to continue to do that, but it's really important for us to spread our message because we know our truth and we won't allow our history to be excluded from our own educational curriculum. And despite all of this, we show re resilience and resistance to any and all of the Israeli occupation forces attempts to plant fear within us. And we reject all of that. And we continue our journey to university. We continue our activism despite all these obstacles that I previously mentioned. And now Feiruz is going to continue more. Hi, everybody. Um... So this introduced us. So uh, I will talk about the restriction of uh, of the movement uh, and uh, the effect of that uh, on the right of education to the Palestinian student. Um, the Palestinian student uh, goes through several paths before uh, being able to reach uh, his place of education at the university. Uh, before I continue, I just want to say something. If uh, if I was very uh, uh, talk quickly, please stop me and. <laughs> Tell me no to to me slowly, and if the connection was uh, not good, also tell me to to fix that. Okay. Uh, due to the existence of the border uh, imposed by the Zionist occupation, which uh, constitute uh, an ob uh, obstacle between the student and the uh, exercise of their right to, to education. With the regard of the type of the border that the Palestinian face, uh, the obstacle or uh, limit between uh, between uh, him and uh, their right uh, to education, there, uh, there are two types, uh, internal border and external uh, border. Uh, and uh, before I uh, continue talk, when we talk about the border inside the Palestine, uh, inside Palestine. Oh, I think we lost her. Okay, I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, no. When we talk about the border, we talk about the uh, an internal uh, border. We talk about the settlement, uh, the separation wall. We talk about the checkpoints and barriers, which uh, located in uh, in all the uh, cities uh, in West Bank. And when we talk, when we talk about external border, we talk about the controlling of Israeli Zionism uh, to to uh, to uh, to whom can uh, can uh, ins uh, go inside Palestine or left uh, Palestine. Okay, uh, at the level of the inter, uh, internal uh, border, uh, they are represented by the uh, uh, barement and uh, temporary ba uh, barriers uh, erected, er erected uh, by the Zionist occupation army between the Palestinian cities in the West Bank region uh, and the barriers between the cities of the West Bank uh, city of the, uh, and the city of Jerusalem and the Palestinian inter interior. The internal border uh, represent uh, these uh, barriers can be uh, expressed and described uh, as a large uh, prison. Uh, when we talk about, about that, we talk about large uh, large prison. We, we, uh, we live inside them, not just the prison, uh, the uh, a specific uh, prison that the Palestinian prisoner uh, inside it, like uh, Majd says about his uh, uh, his uh, what what happened with uh, with him. So uh, as a, uh, a geographic of a, uh, of a prison, uh, and which that uh, affected on the Palestinian uh, Palestinian life uh, uh, in the course of their life, uh, various aspects, uh, including what is the subject of the prison. Uh, 
presentation, which is impact on the right, uh, which is one of the most important rights for all human beings anywhere in the world, which is uh, the right to education. Uh, education. Birzeit University students uh, face several uh, obstacles in order to uh, exercise uh, their, uh, their natural rights, in uh, including their uh, direct con uh, confor conformations with uh, the Zionist uh, occupation. Uh, which seek uh, to unburbus uh, target university student by obstruct, uh, obstructing uh, their access to the university through inspec uh, insect inspection sorry, at a checkpoint, uh, stopping them uh, or some uh, sometime prevent, uh, preventing them from passing. The matters uh, does not stop uh, at, uh, at this limit, but goes beyond uh, to impose uh, forced res uh, resistance inside uh, the house uh, on university students with the Jerusalem ID and to prevent them uh, from leaving outside uh, outside the border uh, of the Jerusalem of city uh, and reaching the university and we call that uh, locally uh, home uh, home arrested uh, as for the checkpoints uh, the road uh, the road does not uh, pass normally uh, but rather uh, it is uh, an state of uh, constant uh, danger uh, danger and tension uh, and tension uh, when the student pass throughout these checkpoints including I, I will name the the, uh, the name of the uh, checkpoints and uh, because it's not lo uh, located in, in one place in West Bank it is located in uh, several uh, cities from north to the west uh, uh, from north to the South and West and East. Uh, we have Kalangia checkpoint, Hizmet checkpoint, uh, Container checkpoint, and Jabak checkpoint, uh, Hizmet checkpoint, and Zatara, Huwara checkpoint. Uh, points. Uh, these are some uh, fixed barriers. Uh, in, addition to, in addition to them, there is a, a group of flying uh, barriers uh, that are uh, set up suddenly and obstru uh, obstruct the traffic uh, bro uh, process. The danger and tension across these checkpoints are represented by the soldier sniper who are on them uh, and directly threaten the Palestinian body with the possibility of shoot, uh, with the possibility of shooting him just because he is a Palestinian under the name of the Zionist uh, policy of uh, purity of arm uh, arms, uh, which permits uh, uh, the killing uh, uh, of a Palestinian just because the soldier uh, feel uh, uh, or assumes that the, uh, that this this the Palestinian student or employee is a danger uh, for him. With regard to the second uh, part of the border, uh, which uh, is the external border, this type of border uh, constitute an obstacle uh, to, uh, to the ability to provide uh, an academic in, uh, environment with the Palestinian University, specifically Birzeit University, uh, by preventing and placing this is a restriction uh, on the movement of academic from the ability to move uh, and enter Palestine uh, and uh, doing and exercise their right to education uh, and transfer the knowledge and experience uh, and expert. In addition to prevent uh, foreign students uh, from arriving uh, or participate in any academic activity at Birzeit University. Uh, during, uh, during the past year, uh, 20 uh, 2022, uh, the military uh, governor uh, issued a new restriction on the freedom of the of movement and academic to enter Palestine, uh, or the stay uh, or stay for those who uh, are inside uh, by, uh, by treating uh, the uh, the produce the produce uh, for staying and entering and sitting uh, the silent for those who allow to be 100 professor uh, and 150 male or female student. Uh, as this discussion uh, constitute the con uh, continue continuation of uh, of the policy for uh, of the Zionist uh, security system attempt to isolate the Palestinian academic academic uh, community from the world uh, for their extension. Uh, this is a violation a violation of a human right uh, target. Uh, Treaty, ter, uh, treatise, uh, sorry, and international agreement, including a clear violation for international law, including uh, the Fourth uh, Geneva uh, Convention in 1949, and the right education inherent uh, in Article 20, uh, 26 uh, of uh, of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948, and Article 13 of the International Govern. Uh, uh, cov uh, covenant uh, on economic, social, and culture uh, culture rights. Um, 
Uh, I talk about the external and internal uh, border. I hope it was clear uh, for any question. We have the, uh, the session for the question, uh, but I need to, to add uh, in addition for that to talk about my experiment uh, in doing my uh, my thesis, because as Sundos introduced me as a master degree student, I finished my course and now I prepare my um, my thesis. My thesis need uh, to uh, need a field work uh, inside the uh, inside the, the West Bank uh, between the, their city. Um, so to do to do that, uh, I can do that normally as any student in the world can uh, can do that uh, because the barriers, as I I told you, because the checkpoints uh, which uh, uh, which uh, cut cut all the the cities uh, uh, all the cities from each other from each other uh, and have their settlement. So they give the the uh, the settler uh, the right to uh, to free uh, free movement. But us as a Palestinian and the land for us, not for. Them, them, they uh, they not allowed uh, to uh, to free for uh, for uh, for movement, and uh, this is this restriction. It's not affect just uh, uh, an our way to go to the university. I woke up from from my home and go to the university, and it's uh, just uh, I pass uh, I pass on the checkpoints. It's not it's not like that, and it's not the symbol of that. No, it is uh, the restriction effect on our right to educational, uh, and due to uh, how how can I write my thesis uh, if I can't do my field work. My thesis is based on uh, uh, in, uh, in field work. I need to go to do an interview with people, uh, uh, with people in a lot of, of cities. For example, one of them, Huwara, and you and you know what uh, what happened in Huwara in the last uh, in the last in the last month, and what the settler doing in Huwara, and the sniper uh, is. Um, is on the barriers all the, all the time. Uh, some uh, sometimes I go to Hawara and they don't allow uh, allow me uh, to enter to uh, to enter Hawara because they uh, close Hawara, close all the uh, uh, supermarket, close all the uh, the buildings. So they don't allow us uh, to go. And uh, in uh, in due that this is how uh, how that affected on uh, on our uh, right uh, to education. Uh, and in, it's, just, uh, it's just the last point and I will finish. When um, when we talk about the cut of uh, as a, a, geo a geopolitics uh, uh, point, when we talk about uh, the cut between the, the area and West Bank, we don't we don't talk about just uh, apartheid system uh, like Sundus, but it, uh, what uh, what uh, what she said about apartheid and the separation. Uh, it's uh, it's more complicated than that. We have um, settlement, uh, we have uh, a separation wall, we have checkpoints and the barriers. These uh, four four uh, four things uh, they are a tool they use in in the apartheid to separate the the cities and separate the people, not just the city. They separated our bodies as uh, from uh, from different loca uh, location uh, as a student, as employee, as a simple uh, a normal uh, person. He need uh, he need to walk. So this this separation um, just just have and one one uh, one purpose just to isolate us from each other as a Palestinian as a, in, in our local and when when they do this isolate they they isolate us from the education from the university when we talk about university today we have a lot of students they love to come and study in Birzeit University but they don't have access to come why because they cannot uh, cannot uh, uh, going to the university every day with this uh, with this reality on the uh, geopolitics on their land they cannot go normally from uh, from north to the uh, uh, from the north for, for example Jenin for Nablus to to be uh, with uh, in, in Ramallah it's not a simple um, a simple path they can they can they can walk uh, walk through uh, through uh, through it and thank you thank you Feiruz thank you Osmiya thank you Mesh thank you Sundos um really appreciate your narratives and everything that you guys have been doing the, between the work and the activism and just your experiences in general um providing us with those narratives means a lot so thank you guys so much for for being here and you know talking um so now we're going to start our q a we have about 15 minutes so um i'm gonna try to uh, get through as many as possible. For the questions, um, either one of you or all of you or two of you or three of you, whoever wants to answer can can answer. Um, so 
The first question that we have is, why do you think that students and student activism is such a threat to Israel? Oh, we have until two. Okay, so we have a lot of time. Yeah. So no, no rush, guys. <sighs> Okay. Anyone who wants to answer that? Maj, do you want to answer that? Uh, I read one of the chat messages that says they see our the democracy that we have. It's a threat for them. They're still, and that's literally what one of the investigator investigators told me in the Muscovia. He told me that your right to vote is a threat of the. They, 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 you, you write to what threats my family, but why he does say that because he knows that uh, Palestinian students having a students council will uh, provide them knowledge of their home and there uh, will be uh, a resistance of uh, this uh, colonization system and the apartheid that they, they do to us. That's the that's why they they see it. Uh, the democracy and the elections that we have in, in universities is a, is a threat uh, for them. Okay, can I add something also? Yeah, of course. Can, can I? I think that there is a. Yeah, sorry. Um, I don't know. Fairuz okay, or... I think the, the... Fairuz, you want to uh, add something? Just one point about the threat and uh, 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 student activity, activism. Uh, for example, <laughs> in, in this chat, when the when we start uh, our panel, some uh, somebody asked about the, the contact of our organization <laughs> as a right to education campaign. It's uh, inside our university. We don't call that organization. We call that campaign uh, because Israeli criminalized the all any any organization a Palestinian work work in it, it is criminalized, uh, criminalize it, even if this work just about uh, about right about uh, uh, about uh, uh, the, the right to talk to right to do to do anything. So if just we can ima imagine uh, one scenario, you talk about right to education a cam uh, as a campaign, uh, uh, like an organization, oh, okay, the, uh, the the military, the, the military a soldier, he will uh, sit in Birzeit and say, mm, we have an organization. Yes, let's go and criminalize it because it's work about the Palestinian and they have uh, a lot of uh, of support from Western world. Oh, we can do that. Let's just uh, use the lobby, the Zionist lobby and uh, shut, the, uh, shut it down, for example. Yani. Thank you. Sundas, do you have anything to add on that point? Yeah, I think that uh, um, yeah relies on the significant role that the um, um, the student movement, let's say, and the student uh, activists inside the campus, Palestinian universities uh, campuses, um, uh, and their impact on uh, the political level and their role to mobilize the students on um, uh, the national level. Um, so I think that's the threat that. Uh, the Israeli occupation um, uh, see as a threat to uh, regarding students. And that's why uh, all the student blocks inside the universities are considered illegal. Um, so as Majd mentioned, uh, the sentences and uh, uh, the sentences and the, uh, that or the charge, uh, the charges on uh, his be, uh, behalf that uh, when he was uh, in, in jail by the Israeli uh, soldiers or the Israeli occupation, yani it all it all yani has relation with his role uh, being part uh, or practicing his right to assembly, uh, being part of the student uh, one of the student blocks. Um, and as one of the people said in the chat, um, uh, election at the Palestinian universities are is very different than the American uh, elections uh, in, the, in the American universities or elections in the American universities. Um, and elections uh, in, the, in our universities uh, comes based on the political uh, uh, student parties. Um, 
And um, when um, a certain party is elected, then uh, the student council is formed uh, based on the proportional uh, distribution, proportional, um, what do you call it? Uh, we, we call it a proportional um, um, uh, sets for, if you're for each party in the student council. Uh, and this uh, is part of the appropriate, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Anna. A proportional representation for all student blocks. So that means that it's highly uh, practicing democracy in this uh, act of um, uh, elections. And moreover, one of the uh, questions was about um, the scene, um, has the advocacy scene uh, changed between uh, the 70s and 80s? Uh, regarding the student movement until today. And I want to answer this, if, if you allow me, Barry, because it's related to this uh, question as well. Yeah. I uh, think what, yeah, I think what is, uh, what has changed is uh, the tools that uh, the student movement is, uh, is uh, using nowadays, uh, but not uh, the, uh, the goal, because uh, what unifies uh, us, um, as students um, and let's say as uh, Palestinian activists in diaspora and on the ground in Palestine uh, is, is one thing, is to have Palestine uh, free. Uh, so uh, the tools has been changed since the 70s and 80s, but uh, the target is one. Um, so, and today as students, we are trying to create more tools. For, the, for example, in the right education campaign, today, each day we're trying to uh, find new ways to connect with people. And now we realize that in the 70s and 80s, people around the world were, was more active and have more solidarity with Palestine, uh, coming from all around the world to Palestine to be a, a part of um, their struggle. Today, we don't find that because um, Palestinian students has to know, know more about the struggles of the, uh, of, the, the pe of, the, of people around the world. For example, uh, I'm a master, I, I used to be a master degree uh, student in international studies. And for me and the other students, it was um, for, you know, for our first uh, uh, for class, uh, our uh, our teacher asked us, uh, you are here about why you are here. We told him to raise the voices of Palestinians, the Palestinian cause, etc. Then he said, now you will learn about everything about in the world, but not about Palestine. This is not about Palestine. And you have to realize that if you don't know the struggles of people around the world, why you are asking them to be part of your uh, uh, um, fight for your freedom. Um, and then it clicked in, in my mind uh, exactly when I don't know the struggles of the black people in America, let's say, and the indigenous people, etc. cetera. Why, uh, how come they will come and be in solidarity with my struggle, with my injustice, with the occupation that I, is being imposed on me? Uh, and that made me, um, uh, and the other students realize that we need to create more tools to connect with these people for to know more about them so they know more about our struggle and to work with us to end this injustice. Thank you. I, I really love that point that you made about interconnected struggles because similarly, you know, student organizing on campuses here, and I'm sure everywhere else in the diaspora, we have the need to you know spread the the word about how interconnected the struggles are whether it's us in america and like like you noted how african americans in this country are oppressed we have to use that connection to you know build our narratives for for each other so um thank thank you for that um and i'm just going to reread the question in case anyone else wants to add on to it so the question was, how would you describe the advocacy scene on Palestinian campuses today compared to that in the 70s and 80s? And is it now more focused on being affiliated with a specific political party rather than creating an environment for unifying the youth? 
So, um, Majd Fedus Osmia, if you guys have anything to add. Uh, I think Sundus covered that question pretty well. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Okay, cool. So um, I'll go on to the next one. Uh, so there are many SJPs, um, which stand for Students for Justice in Palestine, um, around college campuses in the US. Uh, do you have any advice or thoughts on how they can uplift your campaign? I can tell you that this is also a question that I would love to be answered as a member of an SJP. Actually, I, I, I want to give uh, the space for my colleagues, but then uh, please, I, I have a, an answer for this. <laughs> if anyone, uh, Majd, uh, Smiha, and Feruz, if um, you want to. Yeah, so in general, like uh, with all the organizations, SJP and um, the other organizations that form, we always encourage them to, um, share our page and share the right to education campaign because it is a very important campaign and um, it's uh, obviously different from the SJB campaign because it's coming from uh, Palestine and from Birzeit University. So in our conferences, we always try to, um, for example, this conference right now um, to connect to do join conferences to share our socials with each other. And um, I'm sure Sundas has a lot more to say about that. Um, and I can uh, add, uh, add something, uh, if we need uh, to work uh, seriously, I think we need to coordinate between each other in the, from, from, from Palestine and out, uh, outside. And this uh, coordinate, uh, I think he needs to focus on the, uh, on, on the center of the problem. Um, the, uh, the good work from outside, uh, maybe he needs to, uh, to face uh, the, the main problem, which is, which is the, uh, the Zionist lobby, which, uh, which really um, uh, face in, uh, in, our, in, in how the policy making uh, and how how we can talk about our right uh, if we need to talk about our right we need to coordinate how how we can face uh, who make the policy from outside and then shift this this policy inside uh, inside uh, inside palestine uh, which is affect uh, in us as a as a student in in the palestinian uh, university especially in birzeit university when we talk about how we can face the uh, zionist lobby I think we can um, do protests uh, from outside, inside, in the same time. Uh, for example, uh, we can do uh, 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 sharing uh, sharing media media content uh, from uh, from our as a uh, inside Palestine and the student outside. Uh, maybe we can do a compare uh, 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 and compare uh, the uh, our educational right and the American educational right. For example, how their uh, how their educational is uh, bad in a normal way. Uh, but in Palestine, not in normal way. Not not just a compare because we we need to talk uh, about something is not not understand. But if if you need to to send a message, uh, sometimes people uh, understand the message uh, uh, if they uh, if they uh, compare it uh, from another uh, another experience, another um, uh, another group. So uh, maybe uh, the 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 first question uh, the people will ask about it about the Palestinian right for education uh, if they uh, if they they compare uh, compare uh, compare it uh, in their in their educational right especially in america for example or, or in europe or in, in africa or another uh, another uh, another uh, uh, place in the world it's just uh, an an idea i don't know if it's okay or not that's a great idea <laughs> okay um Yes, I think uh, we have been connecting with SJP uh, years ago. Um, and um, they helped us in, um, let's say, mobilize for the, our right to education, especially in 2014, 2016, when we had the right to education tour in uh, more than 37 universities around the US, uh, which was uh, sponsored by the, the NSJP. Um, Actually, and we we used to we wanted to to do the tour again in 2019. But unfortunately, the uh, during the Trump uh, administration, there was a, a huge cut on funding, and uh, it didn't happen. But it was great for us to mobilize. 
uh, from people to people from uh, um, at that time. And we can do that again. Um, I believe that uh, connecting again with NSJP, with uh, SJP chapters and, and all the university chapters, sorry, we, there's a baby behind me. <laughs> That's my baby, sorry for interrupting. Uh, and um, yeah, so basically there's a lot that we can do. Uh, uh, you can um, reconnect with our campaign and be active in the International Right to Education Week, which happens in November. I, I saw one of the questions about the Right to Education Week and uh, it's a platform, an international platform for any international solidarity movement that wants to connect with us. We can do multiple events with it, but also we can uh, organize uh, huge events like conferences and uh, tours. And these tours, uh, uh, the Right Education uh, uh, Tour, we, we give the, the opportunity for for 10 students at the first time, and the second time, 13 students from all West Bank universities to go to the US and ex share their experiences as students living under apartheid. So it was for us to learn on the ground on the struggles of other people. We met indigenous people, we met uh, African American uh, 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 students, mobilizers, we met um, um, uh, activists from Philippines and uh, uh, from Mexico, um, etc. We, we learned a lot through that journey that we are not alone. And uh, uh, the, the, the idea that Barry talked about and I talked about uh, uh, before, uh, to have this intersection and uh, between the struggles around the world, we had that in that tour. And all, it, it opened our minds. And now the students, when they came back uh, the tour, more, most of them now they work in human rights organizations around the world. Uh, so it, it changed also the way that they want to build their future, their career. Um, I think it's very important, as well as supporting the campaign on different levels. And we can work on that, uh, uh, um, just connect with us as a, a campaign, and we can work on that on different levels. And we, as the uh, right to education campaign, also want to uh, connect with you and uh, help you uh, in, in, in any activity that you want. Thank you so much. Um, I know definitely PAC and local SJPs in at least uh, Jersey, and I know my SJP, we're definitely going to be reaching out to you guys to plan some great things in the future. So thank you for all your support. Um, and uh, we're more than happy to support you guys in any capacity. Um, yes, we'll Barry, just, no. we have we have just another point about Wasim. He he asked he he re asked about the party and the Palestinian student activities. Uh, I think I think we cannot do the separate between the parties and the Palestinian activities as uh, 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 like uh, like to see to see it as uh, an issues. The party not an issues, uh, and uh, the student if they uh, belong to to some party A or B or C, it's not the problem. Uh, the problem if we if you need uh, to to uh, if we need to discuss the, the separated as um, uh, 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 as a step to solve the problem it's not the uh, the solving the problem why because when you talk about separated the student about their party you don't have a, a, a Palestinian uh, activities uh, movement uh, in, this is in the first thing uh, second thing um, when you talk about uh, uh, something like this to separate uh, uh, separate um, uh, uh, that you talk about Israeli discourse because the Israeli military discourse uh, uh, it is a Aims to separate the student from their uh, from their uh, parties. Why? Because they they need uh, to 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 shift us uh, as a student from uh, a Palestinian uh, fight to their right and to their freedom uh, from 
in the whole Palestine, Palestinian land, not just West Bank. Uh, they they need to shift us to just a uh, people who who sleep and walk and they go to their university and have their uh, certification to take a job, take a money, and just this is uh, this is the circle of life. It's not for us because we are not in normal situation. We are under occupation Zionist. We need to fight to fight. And you need if you need to fight, you need to 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 carry some ideological uh, thought. And this ideological thought, uh, it, it's an, a party's. Uh, ideological. Uh, uh, if um, uh, when we talk about parties, we talk other, about all all parties, not just one party. Uh, so uh, so you cannot talk about separated uh, like uh, like like as a separate uh, like as solving for the problem. Okay, uh, I do not talk about uh, romantic. Uh, 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 situation uh, for our party. Okay, we have a problem. We have uh, a really, a really in deep problem uh, with the, with the, some of their work. It's okay, we have that. But this this problem, it's uh, it's um, inter uh, it's internal problem in, as a as a local in Palestinian. But we cannot really go from uh, this this line and see uh, and uh, see that uh, like just this is the fix uh, for the problem because it really it's not. And the aim for all military Israeli uh, around, especially in Birzeit University, it's just aim to. Uh, um, to isolate the students uh, from their party and uh, shift them to students think about just money uh, to just live, not not to uh, to uh, to go to fight and uh, freedom. I just want to, to to make this point clear, not because we don't want to fix the problem or, or or just we love the ideological thing. It's okay. The ideological uh, thought to have their. Uh, 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 their positive or negative uh, 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 line, but we don't uh, really uh, just erase erase all things, uh, even uh, of anything. Because uh, in, if if we do this erase, we do about erase our identity as a national identity. We uh, we carry it to to, to really just in, in, in center in center uh, aim uh, to to freedom our uh, our land. We talk about our land, not just West Bank or Palestine. Uh, so just uh, I'm sorry, what's the I don't want to just to be disagree with you about the the uh, the solving the problem, but it's uh, not the uh, the big issues. Yeah, and if I can just add something because I think this is a really important topic, and I think it's a really common mis uh, misconception that um, a lot of people uh, think that the political parties are the are our main source of division uh, division in, for example, Birzeit University or between students. And I want to I want to talk about how that's not really the case. Um, for example, when the student council uh, posts a statement, it's in unity within all political parties. Um, I think also political parties are, you know, one of the resources that we are, I want to say, forced to use now as Palestinian students because we've tried all the ways and this is the way that strengthens us and lets our voices be heard. So um, I think political parties actually do unify us more than dividing us, um, which is a really common mis misconception. So I wanted to clear that up, that it's not something that should be seen as negative. And I think it's actually a really positive thing that, especially in Birzeit University, there is the freedom to be in certain political parties and we feel strength in that, despite it being criminalized um, on a daily basis. So we don't find it as something negative, um, rather something that really strengthens um, our voices and lets them be heard. And it's, and again, like Feiru said, and um, all political parties have the same goal, um, which is freedom of Palestine. And I think it's a very important tool to, to use. Thank you guys. Um, so I have two more questions. Um, so this one, uh, the Palestinian liberation movement in the 70s and 80s was mostly secular. How do you see current student movements being hurt or helped by a religious emphasis? So this is kind of similar to the last question, but except uh, religion. So you know, like, no, the, the, the Islamic party, it's not uh, outside from the liberation of, uh, movement of Palestine. It's really important to to also um, make this point is very clear. The Islamic Party uh, it's uh, um, it's part of uh, our liberation movement. Uh, we cannot just take it uh, as Islamic Party and say it's not uh, national uh, national uh, Palestinian Party because it's uh, it's, uh, it's religious or. Uh, 
especially Islamic. I don't know why the people have homophobia from Islamic. It's just normal people. They eat and work, <laughs> work in the morning and have normal life. I swear, they normal people. Uh, they have their uh, normal life, but the the religious party it's just a part of liberation parties, and not outside from the national identity circle. It's important to talk about that because some uh, sometimes uh, we we do that uh, the separate from uh, national identity and the relig uh, religious party. Uh, uh, the 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 outside the people from outside Palestine see that because the um, historical uh, historical um, uh, role of the religious party uh, in the world uh, and they think the uh, the Palestinian experience in religious party the same in the in the uh, in the in the world I don't see that we have uh, an um, an special uh, special case uh, to separate us as a Palestinian from the other world no not like this but indeed uh, we have some uh, some specific and special case in some point uh, especially in uh, in the case of the religious uh, religious party we don't see uh, as uh, as a component of our uh, Palestinian national identity we don't see the religious party outside from uh, from it. No, it's uh, it's part of, of it. But, but they have uh, their own uh, catalog of ideology. They have uh, their uh, special thing to see. They 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 believe that the God will free Palestine. It's okay if they they need uh, they if they th think like that. It's okay. I, it's not important. The important to free Palestine, even the God or uh, or non-religious uh, party. It's not the big problem. Um, anyone else like to add? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, um, I didn't get a, a question totally. Sorry. So, what does secular mean? I mean, if one secular secular means no explain. religious affiliation. Oh, okay. Um, I think, but uh, yani, there is a stereotype. Uh, in this uh, a question re related to um, to to uh, re liberation liberation uh, movements in Palestine, I think that Fairuz took take up uh, um, a good part talking about this, and I agree with her that yani uh, what unifies us is uh, to free Palestine and. Um, yani, we try in the campaigns, for example, we, we, we are in a reality where there are many political blocks inside campus, student political blocks, and we try to um, have uh, as many as volunteers in campaign that are uh, uh, from different backgrounds as see it, uh, we see it vital uh, not to exclude anyone, uh, and whether the in the seventies and eighties was a secular revolution. Today, uh, the new generation finds its way. Uh... Sorry. You can hear me. Oh. Yeah, um, I don't think that uh, today it's based on religion. Uh, yani, it's not a stereotype what is happening on the ground uh, in Palestine, uh, because it's not on uh, uh, based on religion. Can just I I, I just uh, reply to to Wasim because he said about our Palestinian for the parties if if we talk if you if we talk about the palestinian identity yes we we talk we see like uh, we see ourselves first of all for any party as a Palestinian, it's okay, yes. And uh, in this way, we see that when we talk about Fairuz, Rasmiya, Majd, anybody, I don't come and tell you, oh yeah, uh, I'm, um, uh, I, I, I'm a part of uh, some party. I'm not a, uh, a part of some party, I'm a Palestinian in the first of all. But if you need to, to take this discussion uh, in, in the context, uh, the Palestinian identity, 
the Palestinian national identity. It's uh, have uh, not one circle. We have a lot of circle. The, the first circle, it's you, you identify yourself as a Palestinian. This is the first identify. Then the second circle, you identify us uh, if you need uh, 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 that's related to your party, uh, to your any ideological. Yeah, we lost uh, connection uh, with Fairuz. OK. It is OK now. Uh, no, send the service is heard. OK. Yeah, you, you're fine. Uh, it's OK now, yes? No, you're you're fine. I can hear you. Okay, so uh, you talk about the first circle. It's the Palestinian identify you and identify yourself as a Palestinian. Then the second circle, you identify yourself uh, as your party, maybe or uh, your ideological thoughts. The second, the second, uh, no. Sorry, the second uh, the second uh, circle uh, as an Arabic, uh, an Arabic um, a person uh, live in uh, live in the Arabic region. The, the third circle, you identify yourself uh, uh, be, uh, uh, be, um, uh, how how you related uh, to your party. So you ha we have three three circle to uh, to identify our uh, uh, our identity as uh, our identity uh, uh, as a national nationality or how we see ourselves. Yes, we see ourselves as a Palestinian in the first of all, but we have another circle. Some people. Um, do not see this this uh, this circle in the same in the same way I see it. Uh, Palestinian Arabic, then another party. Some people see the Arabic in the first, then you then you are Palestinian, then your ideological of of your uh, of your party. It's not the, the the big issues, but if you if you need to understand how uh, how the context in Palestine, you need to understand what's the meaning of the identity in our context and about the election. We don't have an election in Birzeit University if we don't have a party. For, for this is for the information the election and the democracy happen because we have uh, a parties they have their uh, uh, their student who believe in it they they come and they do the election again i do not talk about romantic situation we have a problem we have an issues yes we have every uh, this problem we can we need to uh, to discuss uh, to discuss deeply as a youth in Birzeit University to solve this problem. Yes, we don't talk about anything is uh, perfect and uh, fantastic 100%. No, not like this. We have an issues, we need to solve it, but that not uh, cancel the context and the historical um, line and how the identity create and the Palestinian create it uh, and how they, they dealing with that. I, I need just to talk about that because I need to be clear for Wasim what we talk about that. We, got, we are not disagree with him. We have a problem, but uh, we need to understand more that the context. Thank you, Fedus. Um, So just for these last two questions, I just saw um, uh, going to ask Rosmi or Mej to answer just because um, I'd like to hear more from them. Um, so for this next question, um, can you give more information about the nature of the organization of the conference that you guys mentioned will be happening in November, as well as the solidarity week that you guys also mentioned? Um, okay, so in November, it's going to be uh, the Right to Education Week. But um, honestly, I think the person who can give the details of the conference would have to be the coordinator of the Right to Education campaign, Sundus. Fair enough. Uh, so unless if, uh, if you'd like to respond, I don't know if you heard the question or not. Yeah. Oh, to the Right to Education uh, Campaign Week. Right to Education Week, sorry. Yes. Uh, so uh, the Right to Education Week is, uh, um, uh, let's say, an international platform that we created in 2008 in order to um, have a collective, uh, um, let's say, support for the right to education for Palestinians on a local level and international level. And we try to have a certain theme each year. Uh, so this year will also be about the AME last year and this year will be about academic freedom in its general um, wide uh, meaning of academic freedom as uh, um, as uh, in the past two years, we are facing many violations to this, uh, to our academic freedom. Um, as I said in my
she's having connectivity problems. My uh, presentation, uh, for example, about the new. Do you hear? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, you can. We can hear you now. Okay. Um, and about uh, we are losing uh, part of our staff, international uh, staff, because of the Israeli procedures of uh, entry. Uh, that was um, effective uh, last October, um, and uh, it is affecting the university autonomy and our uh, ability to develop our society as a university and higher education institutions in general in Palestine. Um, so we are trying each year, we are trying to highlight different violations uh, towards our right to education. And this year it will be, it would be about uh, our academic freedom. And this uh, year we are, we will have a conference in, in both virtual and we will try to uh, have uh, some uh, solidarity group coming to Palestine to uh, have this uh, conference on Palestine. So if you uh, want to be part of this uh, uh, week and uh, you are interested in being part of this conference coming to Palestine, be part of it, uh, we can, uh, we would love uh, to have you and maybe uh, we can send you more information about that uh, later uh, through Rania and through PAC. Um, so basically, yes, we are trying to mobilize and organize uh, uh, um, our efforts on this uh, week and in, in the international week. And also, I I I saw I know that you want to hear more about. You don't want to hear my voice anymore. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I talked a lot. Sorry. No, it's okay. That. Thank you. Uh, yeah, but I saw one of what one questions about uh, um, do you, do you support or encourage uh, Palestinians in diaspora to come to study in Brazil University? I say yes, please come. Yeah, ahlan wa sahlan. come to us. <laughs> uh, we have uh, we have the uh, 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 customized um, let's say uh, program called the uh, Palestinian. And Arabic studies program, past program, uh, which is uh, customized, customized for three uh, uh, months uh, based on the tourist visa, that is three months only. And uh, it's about uh, the Palestinian question, learning, uh, learning uh, Arabic uh, and uh, uh, fee having field visits uh, to um, Palestinian villages uh, to know more about the culture, the life, the daily uh, uh, life of Palestinians, and you will be students at Birzeit University. So please do come yani, and uh, be part of this program. It's very fun to have you, and uh, uh, it's a very fun experience. Yani. And not only that, it also supports the uh, Yani, the Palestinian students, when we saw, see uh, international students on our campus. Um, so yeah, I can send you the, um, the program uh, uh, website. So if you want to, to come and it's uh, available uh, on the summer, yes. Thank you so much. I, I know me personally, I'm planning on applying to that program. Oh, um, me too. Come there. <laughs> I will. So I'm. I'm yeah, glad. I'm glad I have. Uh, I I have a a nice group of people to greet me. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Once um. Oh, sorry. So that that wraps up the questions for the Q. Um. If you guys have any closing remarks, just for the last couple minutes, go ahead. Um. Sally ask about something. Can I answer 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 it in chat? Um, Can I answer that? You um, yeah, no, go go ahead. Um Sally, we in, I understand how the uh, American political system works to separate the religious uh, from the politics things and the matter. But here's in even in Palestine, in Palestine specifically specifically. We talk about the when you talk about the re, uh, the religion, it's not uh, something uh, 
uh, as, as just a point you, you see it in some group. No, the, the culture in, in general in Palestine, it's an Islamic culture and uh, Christian culture. We have these two culture and uh, Judaism culture, but we don't, uh, we have some uh, group Jud uh, Judaism culture, but not Zionist. I, we, we have- no, I, uh, think, I think it's- with, with, uh, 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 We have- yes. Yeah. We have we have we have conflict with Zionism uh, as occupation, not with religious. But we, when we talk about the the the, the, the general culture for uh, for for the people, it's, it's okay to be. Uh, they cannot separate the religious from their uh, daily uh, dialing uh, uh, process process. But that that does not cancel the 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 uh, their activities. Uh, to to fight and to def uh, to fight for their rights uh, in education or uh, or anything else. For example, we are. I don't know if uh, for, for for me I'm not uh, so much religious, but I can understand uh, uh, what the religious is mean in our in my community, and I can understand the uh, sensitive uh, point in that. I I can't come and see. Uh, yes, I'm lay. I don't want anybody to be religious. I can't do that because we have a a, a diviser. Um, uh, religious, not one religious, especially in Palestine, uh, we can uh, uh, do a panel between um, this religious and how how we can see the the political attitude and fight of that. I don't know if I answer your question, Sally, or not. But the political system in Palestine is different uh, from America, and how the culture also different. Okay, I think Sally says you're good. So. Uh, thank you, Sunda. Thank you, Fairuz. Thank, thank you, Rosmia. Thank you, Majd. We really, really appreciate you guys coming on and um, talking and giving us your perspectives. Um, and we hope to continue working with you guys and empowering your work um, and you. you know building building these solidarity campaigns. So once again, thank you so much for being on here and taking the time. Um, and that concludes our session. Um, yes. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I'm very happy to be with you. Hope to meet you again, especially in Palestine, in Brazil. Thank you very much for all of you. Yes, from Palestine to US and uh, around the world. Around the world, yes. So um, that concludes what we have planned for today. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Rania and Khulud for translating the last session with Fahed. And please be sure to join us tomorrow for the final day of the conference at 11 a.m., where we'll be in conversation with Omar Barghouti and Monel Kurd. You guys do not want to miss it, and we hope to see all you guys there. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Barry. Oh, oh, oh.